Hi everyone and welcome back to The Shack for a look back at a game that was as groundbreaking and innovative as it was fun, challenging and exciting to play. It's one of my favourite games of all time and it was a system seller for its original launch platform, the Atari ST, and I remember this game captivating me like no other before it and very few since. So join me today as we delve inside the absolute classic that is Dungeon Master. Here at The Shack, we'd like to give a huge thank you to the sponsor for this video, PCB Way. They help us out with all of our PCB fabrication needs and make fantastic boards at amazingly competitive prices. And it's not only PCBs that are on the menu. Apart from other fabrication services like CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication and injection moulding, PCB Way also have a great projects library of cool stuff to build from people all around the world. Oh, and if you don't like waving a soldering iron about, they can even assemble your PCBs for you. That's the PCB way. Right, on with the show. So back in 1987, computer role playing games weren't exactly a new thing. Now, bear in mind, we're not talking about adventure games like Colossal Cave or Zork, which were text based and had a prescriptive and repeatable solution. We're talking about games with proper role playing mechanics, which featured player statistics influencing your character's abilities in various situations and an element of luck akin to throwing the old bunch of D6s across the table. There had of course been many graphical role playing games before 1987 when Dungeon Master was launched and in fact going back to arguably the very first of its kind, D&D, &D, that was way back in 1975 and is also notable for introducing boss monsters to video games. A lot of role playing games before 1987 were top down affairs with overland map screens to navigate with a figure representing your party and town and dungeon maps which became more granular and allowed you to direct individual members of your team. Games like this such as the early Ultima series were very popular but whilst they did emulate very well the feeling of tabletop dungeons and dragons they didn't put you in the game, you were watching from your godly perch above. A lot of these games also had a limited level of choice. Being keyboard driven, you were often presented with a choice of a few things you could do at any given time. Out in the wilderness, you may have the options of going north, south, east or west, having a rest or maybe searching your surroundings. You're given some options and you choose one and then the game plays out the result. In a scuffle, you may be asked if you want to fight or run or maybe cast a spell. All good fun, but being given choices at a given time always made me at least wonder why I couldn't, for example, punch the skeleton and then run away and hide before coming back and throwing an apple at it. With the emergence of the 16-bit machines being more powerful with better graphics, more memory and the mouse becoming more prevalent as a means of interacting with a computer, the way we played games was changing and role playing games were no exception. So in 1987 when I first entered the dungeon in Dungeon Master I remember thinking this was utterly amazing. I had an actual view of a dungeon ahead of me and I could walk forward, turn around and see the door I just entered through and it felt like I was there. While I waited for the game to load, I was filled with excitement, wonder, surprise and dread. What waited for me at the end of this corridor? Where did the opening to the right lead? Would I be beset by monsters as soon as I walked in? I simply didn't know what to expect. The real genius of the game came from the way that it tied you as a player not only to your eventual motley band of adventurers, but also by placing you yourself in that world. When the game starts, you're a disembodied soul, able to walk around the world but not able to interact with it. Now this part of the game served two important roles. Firstly, it allowed you to get used to the navigation controls using either the arrow keys on the keyboard for forward, back, left and right, 
insert and home to turn left and right by 90 degrees respectively or by clicking on the movement arrows on screen. Secondly, it allowed you to become used to noticing things. That little green bit of slime on the floor might not seem important as you approach it and likewise that puddle you can see just around the corner but noticing these little graphical details is very important to the game. This might just be a puddle but it could have been a monster. This slime could have been a trap door. You learn very quickly to keep your eyes peeled for things that look different or out of place. Now, after a while of wandering around, I started to think, okay, is this it? And, oh, no, wait, what's this? The Hall of Champions. And it's here that you stumble across these mirrors hanging on the wall. Trapped inside each of these are the souls of adventurers past, and you're free to look at them all and choose four of them to resurrect and to act as the conduit of your thoughts and actions. Using the mouse you can interact with your character's belongings, dragging and dropping items into and out of their backpack or equipment slots. You can see their stats and the equipment they start with. And if you find a character that you like, you can resurrect them, making them part of your party. Once you've found four characters that you like, your party is complete and you're ready to begin the game proper. You need to choose wisely as each character has strengths and weaknesses and there are many, many opinions on what makes the perfect Dungeon Master Party. And choosing your characters in this way, bringing them into your world, bonds you to them. No other game before or since has had me so attached to my characters and to truly care when they suffered, rejoice when they won and feel loss when they die. That subtle bridge of putting you into the world, making it yours, and then pulling the characters in is genius. Simply genius. So with our carefully chosen party on board, we can begin our adventure. And this is also where the brilliance of the game design shines through. It doesn't throw everything at you all at once, leaving you overwhelmed or confused. And it also doesn't put you on an obvious linear track where you feel you don't have any option on where to go or what to do. You're left to discover things, notice things, figure things out. And when you do figure out that you can pick up that apple off the floor and put it in your backpack or drop it onto another character or notice that bread in the corner or that you can pull a torch out of its sconce on the wall and use it as a portable light source and then realise that it doesn't last forever so you have to keep them for when you really need them, it all gives you this little dopamine dump of satisfaction that just makes you want to discover more. And there is a lot to discover. There are magic scrolls lying around that will give you access to spells of all types that when you cast them have a visible and audible effect on the world around you. There's weapons and armor to find and you soon realize that the apple and bread you found earlier aren't just there for decoration. You need to keep your characters topped up with food and water otherwise they start taking damage and that means rationing because food and water become rarer the deeper you go. And of course there's the monsters and there are lots of those. But again here's where Dungeon Master really was different. What set Dungeon Master apart from other RPGs of the time was its real time combat system. Instead of taking turns to attack, you had to think on your feet and react quickly to enemy attacks. This created a sense of urgency and tension that was unmatched in other RPGs of the era. For this style of gameplay, the game's mouse-based controls were a revelation. Instead of typing in commands, you could interact with the game world using a pointer and a series of context-sensitive menus, making the game much more intuitive and accessible than other RPGs. But perhaps the most remarkable thing about Dungeon Master was its dungeon design. The levels were intricately designed with puzzles, traps and secrets hidden around every corner. The game's designers made brilliant use of the system's graphics to create a sense of depth and immersion that was unprecedented in video games at the time. Dungeon Master was a true trailblazer and it remains a beloved classic among retro gaming enthusiasts to this day. 
its impact on the world of video games can't be overstated. Its real-time combat system and mouse-based controls were adopted by other games and its dungeon design philosophy can still be seen in modern games today. In terms of its graphics and sound, Dungeon Master was top-notch, featuring impressive 3D graphics and haunting sound effects that added to the game's atmosphere and tension. The fact that it had no musical score on the ST made it all the more intense. The silence was genuinely scary. Later versions, such as the SNES version, had a musical soundtrack, and I think that detracted from the game. Of course, by modern standards, the graphics and sound may seem dated, but the gameplay still holds up remarkably well. The real-time combat system and mouse-based controls feels just as fresh and innovative today as they did in 1987, and the dungeon design is still impressive, with puzzles and secrets that will keep you engaged and challenged. Overall, Dungeon Master is a true classic that deserves to be remembered and celebrated. Its innovations and strengths have stood the test of time and it remains a shining example of what video game design can achieve when it pushes the boundaries of what is possible. If you're a fan of RPGs or video game history, Dungeon Master is a must play. Well, that's my little homage to one of my favourite games of all time. If you enjoy Dungeon Master, you may want to try Legend of Grimrock by Almost Human, which bears more than a passing resemblance to Dungeon Master, but built for today's more powerful machines. Did you play Dungeon Master? What system did you play it on? Let me know your Dungeon Master stories in the comments. Also, let me know if you like this type of retrospective review. Finally, thanks for being patient with us, as you may know we're going through a bit of upheaval here at the shack, but we're nearly settled and there will be more details coming soon of what to expect in the coming months. So it's back to the dungeon for me, and to all of you out there in Retroland, we'll see you back in the shack real soon.